In this video we're going to cover bringing in your STL model, scaling it, positioning it, and rotating it, and getting it ready for slicing. So I'm going to go to Object, Add STL, Open STL. I'm going to go to my desktop and pick, let me see here, model.stl. And you see it brought in with the 0, 0, 0 point of my model shown on the 0, 0, 0 point of the rendering. Note that this is actually off the bed a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me, this is the home position where the head parks and the bed parks. So first I want to get it generally in the center because it's mechanically desirable to print in the center of the bed because you're centered on the bearings. The easiest way and the way we recommend is to click this big target which will center the object X and Y and also bring the lowest point flush to the build plate. So there it is. Now I'm going to use my scroll wheel to zoom in. I'm going to use the center button to reposition and the left button to change my orientation here. So this simple model I just did in FreeCAD. And it's got some features so you can tell which way it's facing. In our rendering we show the red light on the front left corner of the build plate so you see know your orientation and this origin the zero 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 point has got a sphere rendered on it in white. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so there are many ways that you can move it around. If you merely right click and drag whichever models highlighted is the ones you're affecting if you have multiple models showing you can move it in the XY only and you'll see these X and Y numbers change but the Z will remain whatever it whatever you had it set to. So I can drag it around in the X and Y and I can engage a grid snap so if I want a 10 millimeter grid snap then I can only move it 10 millimeters at a time okay with the drag tool I can also adjust the positioning or I can just type in a new value and hit enter I can do that for the X and the Y and the Z I can actually move it up or down if I want in the Z although normally there's no reason not to print down on your Z0 location. I can force it under but it won't slice that way. It'll force it up when it's time to slice and I think it'll force it down also but we'd like to do it the proper way so we bring that right to zero. If your origin of your model is up in the middle then when you bring it in to zero 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 it may be below but when you click this tool it'll bring the bottom point, or whatever this offset says, it'll bring the bottom point flush to the build plate. So now we have our model positioned how we want. That's the offsets. For scale, initially my X, Y, and Z, let me mention here, we're working in millimeters. If you bring in your model and it's really, really tiny, like the 25th of what it should be, perhaps you modeled in inches, we brought it in millimeters. If you toggle this millimeter button, I'll make this thing, instead of being 30 millimeters wide, be 30 inches wide. And that's a pretty big rendering. We don't want to make this that wide. I'm going to turn back to millimeters and zoom in on our little shape. Okay. For scale, normally the XYZ aspect is locked so that you can grow the entire shape larger or smaller proportionally. And you can do that with the scroll, the number button, the wheel here, or you can just type in how you want it. For instance, if I was going to print this in ABS and I wanted it to print at the size it was modeled, I know the ABS shrinks just over 1%, so I would print it at 1.01 .01 size. And when it cooled down after printing, it would be dimensionally tolerant. To compare that, the actual size is just slightly smaller. However, I can also skew or distort this without really editing it. So if I unlock my XYZ aspect ratio, I can move it, scale it only in the X, or only in the Y, or only in the Z. If I want to get back to the true dimensions, I just make an adjustment, I lock it and adjust on the X, and everything will be snapped to the same dimensions. Finally, rotating. Sometimes you model a shape and by the time you're done you realize it would print better lying on its side or its back or upside down. That's not a problem here. So I can take this model and I can rotate it around the X axis either a degree at a time or I can type in if I want it at 45 
or I can actually just hit uh, 15 degree increments if I want to spin it around. If I wanted to print it this way, I could. I would bring the target button to pop it back up and center it again, and we could print them that way. Although there are some unsupported arches about 15 millimeters wide, that's about the point where you want to consider support material, and some of these bridges in here are going to be unsupported if we don't select a recipe with support material. If we want to move it, we can also move it about the other axis, about the Y. And we can rotate it about the Z. So I'm going to set these guys back to zero. Pop them back down. And if we want to spin them around the Z axis, oops, I've got this rotated. If we want to spin them around the Z, we can do that as well in whatever combination of these you want to do. But the goal is to have your model scaled, positioned, and rotated in the manner placed on the bed that you want to print it at. When you're done with that, we're ready to move on to the slicer tab and look at our slicer recipes.